Hello, here we are again, the Sudoku guy with lesson eight. Now this lesson is somewhat different from all the other lessons in that I'm just going to be spending the lesson explaining the power of the matching pair. There's many things that you can do when you've got matching pairs. And what I'm going to show you today is not a puzzle, but an example. We call it a scenario. Later on in the course, I also do some scenarios. Here we go. If this particular row, and I'm talking here rows, this is an example of a row. This is an example I'm going to explain of a, of a column. And this is a, an example of a block. They don't relate to each, any, any, in, to each other. So what I'm going to show you, let's say you had a puzzle and you had this along a row. You had a matching pair, 3636, three, six, and one empty cell. It's so easy to find that empty cell. All you have to do is to count up to nine and see which ones are missing. But let me show you how you do your counting. One, two, three is already taken. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We found out that the five was the one that was missing. So we put in our five. That was as simple as anything, isn't it? Now let's take a column. We've got a column where you've got a 3636 three, six matching pair. And the way to find it out, find out what this one is, is simply do the same sort of thing, but with a column. One, two, this is a three, four, five is missing, six, seven, eight, nine. So the five that was missing goes there. Now let's take the uh, block. We have 3636 three, six with one block missing. You see, the key is to look for these things. So often when you're doing Sudoku puzzles, you forget to look for these things. Uh, for example, I was working with a former student the other day who was stuck and she'd forgotten all about doing the vertical and the cross checking. And once you did that, then the whole puzzle came together. It's amazing sometimes. All you need is one number. And once you put that one number in, a whole puzzle comes together. That's exciting. Okay, let's take this one now. We've got a 3636 three, six and an empty cell. Once again, we count through. One, two, three is, in, is spoken for. Four, five is missing. Six, seven, eight, nine. So this empty cell has to be a five. And that's how it works. The key is to look for that situation. Now, what say you've got a row where there's two numbers missing? Now what do you do? Well, we, we, you've already learned that if you've got two numbers missing, you can guarantee that those two numbers missing will make up a matching pair. Well, the same thing happens when you've already got a matching pair. Okay, so we go one, two, three, four is missing. So we put a four here and a four here. Five, five is missing. Put a five there and a five there. Six, seven, eight, nine. We've come up with two matching pairs. Do you know what? Quite often, when you get to more advanced puzzles, you can have more than just two sets of, uh, of matching pairs in a row, column, or block. Sometimes you can even get three sets of matching pairs, which is so powerful. Let's sit now with the same system here. Let's say um, you had uh, two empty cells here. Okay. Because we have two empty cells, they are spoken for. There's a three and a six there, no matter what. We don't know what order, but we know that they are spoken for. So we go through the same procedure for the column. One, two, three spoken for. Four is missing, so we can put a four there and a four down here. Five is missing, we put a five there and a five down there. Six is here, seven, eight, nine. So we now finish up also with a matching pair. The same principle works whether it's a row or a column. And the same principle works over here if you had a situation where there was two numbers missing. Let's take again the four and five. We'll go through one, two, three. Four is missing, so you put a four there and a four there. Five 
is missing, you put a 5 there and a 5 there. Underline it to let you know that there's no other numbers that can go there. Now you've got the whole block with two matching pairs. When you, from now on, when you're looking at a row, a column, or a block, if you notice there's one or two cells missing, you now know how to fill them in. So that's it for today's lesson. Au revoir.